Well, that does not look good. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, we got to put out the fire. Oh, boy, there's still somebody in it, so that's not good. Let's go ahead and try to open this up. Ooh, that does not look good. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am playing Plane Accident. This is a game where you get to become a plane crash investigator, and it should be pretty fun. I've been wanting to play this game for quite a while, and I finally went ahead and purchased it. So we're gonna check it out, see how it is, and it should be pretty fun. Alright, so we gotta go through training, it says here. So, uh, yeah, let's check this out. Alright, so we're gonna go to the back of the truck here, and, uh, go ahead and open this up and it looks like I'm gonna need to do some changing to the view here because uh, well it's inverted in this axis all right let's open up the trunk and uh, yeah let's grab the backpack there we go so now we got to go ahead and find the wreckage in the hangar so we'll go around this way and it looks like we are of course in a training environment so we've got some cardboard trees up and stuff like that so we're gonna use this flag here I'm just gonna put it down right where it says to all right, cool. And we'll drop one right over here. There we go. All right, so now we got to extinguish the flames. So that should be pretty simple. We just got to pull out the fire extinguisher and take care of these. So here we go. Pretty cool. Fairly simple. And there we are. So now we got to use the drone here to uh, scan the map for parts. And look at that. That is really cool. So now we can just fly it around. All right, let's check over here. Let's see if we can find anything. And there's something right here. So this guy is now saying we got to photograph the evidence, which shouldn't be too hard. So we'll just go over to these circles and take pictures of the wreckage. There we go. And now that that's done, we got to call the technician. So, uh, yep. All right, so with that done, we're now actually going to go ahead and read through the documents. So we got to go to here in the office and open up the case file. So there's that. Now let's go to the log here. There we go. Alright, so we just gotta select it. Oh, that's pretty funny. One of the replaced components was hyperspeed, which I don't believe a Cessna 172 is gonna be able to do, but, you know, whatever. Let's go to the flight log. Let's go to here. So there's that. And then there's this. Now we gotta check the photo evidence. Let's start with photo one. That's a picture of the bottle we just took. And then this should be the airplane. Yep, there it is. And now we've got some witnesses. So I'll open this up. Lady Y. There we go. The plane exploded in the air. It was a bomb. Okay. There we go. All right. So we got the airplane blueprints here. So that's pretty cool. Now it's saying to inspect the black box, which I didn't know you could install on a Cessna 172. But yeah. So we're going to open up the hatch. There we go. So now that we have the hatch, I think I have to drop it down somewhere. So I'll put it down right here, and let's go over here to the black box. There we go. And we'll take this to the station just over here. Pretty cool. But basically, I guess we want to uh, make it sound normal. Oh, there we go. Alright, so there we go. The black box is all set, so let's go apparently receive an email to solve the case. So we'll sit down at the computer and uh, check out our inbox. So here we go. The recording was decoded correctly. The result of the reading, during the flight, the plane would rapidly lose altitude a number of times. It must be inspected whether it was the cause of the weather conditions or the steering system malfunction. Recommendations, send the result for further investigation in the Aviation Aerodynamics Institute or AAI. So we're going to email the AAI to uh, please conduct a further analysis of the sent black box recordings. Best regards, unnamed. Now we can actually call the witness, so this is pretty cool. So uh, we'll start with Mechanic X. Hello. Yes, it was me who was taking care of the plane. The machine was new and functional. It was bought the previous year. It required no reparations, and the inspections were conducted on time. So there you go. So now we get to place all the clues on the board. So we can just put that there. So of course our witness from the ground said it was a bomb. We got the black box that says the flight controls or the weather might be at fault. We inspected a substance, which was a bottle that was sitting over there. And we will have to send the bottle in for further analysis. We're going to bring it over to this box. 
and we'll package it up and send it out so we can pick the box up and bring it to the truck. So with that being sent out for further analysis, let's go ahead and read the email, probably from the AAI. So the AAI says, we've thoroughly inspected the black box recording and have compared it to the weather conditions on the plane's flight route. The loss of altitude was caused by the natural weather phenomenon and not by any problems with the steering of the plane. The plane's control systems were functional. So that's good to know. So now we get to reconstruct the airplane. So yeah, we're gonna need to grab our drill here. We'll grab the rudder, put the rudder on the plane. And now all we have to do is scan the aircraft. So we can scan for explosives. We'll start with that. And there we go. The drone is taking off. Pretty cool. And as you can see, it's doing its scanning stuff there. Oh, look at that. That's really cool. It says the scan was conducted correctly. The result has been sent to us via email. Also, we got a package. So let's pick this up. We'll bring this over here. Then we got to go check that email real quick. So one result from the laboratory about that bottle, which says it was hydrogen peroxide, which means it didn't really have any influence on the accident. And here we have the results from the scanner or the drone we just used. And the scan has indicated a significant amount of TNT on the fuselage and numerous marks caused by an explosion. The plane most likely exploded in midair. So there we go, we've completed the training and now we can move into the real thing. So this should be pretty fun. All right, so it looks like we are on a farm and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and grab the backpack out of the trunk. So I do hear a little bit of something to the left. Oh boy. Well, that does not look good. Oh yeah, there it is. All right, we gotta put out the fire. I was about to say I saw a piece of a landing gear right in the field there. Oh boy, there's still somebody in it, so that's not good. There we go. All right, that one's done. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and try to open this up. There we go. Ooh, that does not look good. The pilot is alive, thankfully. We'll call for medical assistance right now. And there he goes, off in the ambulance. We'll start by marking all this down. Pretty important we get this crash site all marked off. All right, now that that's marked, we gotta actually mark the wreckage itself. So let's go out this way. So we've got a landing gear, we'll mark this. We got another landing gear here. Looks like the pilot tried to land. I could be wrong, but we'll find out soon. We might have some witnesses to talk to. All right, what's this? Looks like a piece of metal. Oh, here we go, tail wheel. That would be on the back of the plane. I like how the creator of the game has put some like trash around because I would imagine in real life, not everything's gonna be plane parts. There's also gonna be just random stuff around. Oh, hey, now I know what that scrap piece of metal is. It actually goes on the side of the plane because there's one identical over here, just a different color. All right, so now we've got to take some pictures because we gotta get some evidence here. So let's go ahead and just stand over here. There we go. Let's go over here and grab another one. There we go. Not the best photo with the uh, caution tape in the way, but it'll work. We'll take a picture of this piece of metal. There we go. And now we need to call the technician. So I'll give them a ring. And here they come. All right. So the plane is now back at the hangar. The technicians have brought the plane here. And now we got to go check our documents just like we did in the tutorial. So here we go. Let's read the documents. We'll start with the pilot's log. So it looks like this aircraft was an Air Duster 205. It was equipped with a flight data recorder and the pilot, Crazy Fred, took off in his air tractor and suddenly without any apparent reason, the plane started to descend. And thanks to the pilot's experience, he was able to make an emergency landing. So let's move on to the pilot's log. So April and second half of April, it looks like um, it's time for vegetable spraying. So new tanks, I could be wrong, but that might be more weight added to the aircraft. It could be a little overweight, and that might be the reason, or one of the reasons, why the plane could have crashed. But we got to go through all the evidence first before we come to any conclusions. In February, he did say that he was checking the plane. However, he also mentioned that it would be helpful for somebody else to help him. All right, so let's move on to the technical log, because now that we know that there are some tanks there, it's probably worth taking a look at. All right, so we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. And as you can see, he says, I fixed the throttles because it was sticking. 
Okay, that seems routine, I guess. Then, during the harvest, he says the engine isn't running so well. He's looked at it, but he doesn't know what's wrong with it. I have to take it to Stanley. So we'll have to talk to Stanley, because uh, he might be a person we need to actually uh, sort of ask some questions towards. Now, it looks like here he fixed the throttles, but then the issue came back up again. So then we'll go to uh, February 18th of 2022 when he's talking about the engine again. So he's got engine regeneration, fluid replacement, hydraulic system inspections. Uh, no other repairs were performed. However, the owner has been informed about the poor technical condition of the aircraft. And this inspection comes from Stanley. So again, we need to talk to him. In March, it looks like he installed the black box. So that's going to help us out a little bit. And here we go, back with the spraying tanks. So, yeah, I attached the new spray tanks. Now one flight and everything will be sprayed. So, again, we got to look at that. And in June, the most recent entry, the pilot mentions that there was a problem with the radiator, but he fixed it with gray tape. So, not sure if that's aviation tape or just duct tape. If it's duct tape, we might have a problem, even if it's aviation tape. That also might be a slight issue. I'm not an aircraft mechanic, I don't know, so I'm making a guess there, but we'll have to take a look at these problems. It looks like we've got mechanical issues and then possibly an overweight issue with the larger tanks. So now we're going to go ahead and check the testimonials of the people that either witnessed the crash or were maintaining the aircraft, including Stanley. So uh, let's go ahead and open this up. So it looks like we don't have Stanley in here, but we'll have to give that person a call. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's take a look at what this guy says. So, this guy's saying, uh, what a break. I managed to determine that the witness to the accident was neighbor Mike. So, we now know that somebody did witness the crash, so we will talk to him. We also have St. Mary Hospital. So, Mr. Fred, uh, was admitted to our hospital in critical condition and has not regained consciousness yet. When his condition improves, I will inform you by email. So, yeah, we have to wait and see how things go with him. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give a call to Stanley, our mechanic. Okay, this is really interesting. Stanley here is saying, this plane was literally held together with duct tape and there were rarely ever inspections conducted on the aircraft. He did say that he did help Fred install the black box. So uh, yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. Not looking good for the condition of the aircraft. Let's go ahead and talk to neighbor Mike. Mike said that he was sitting out on the porch, saw Fred flying over in his air tractor, and at one point the plane went straight down to the ground, but luckily Fred was able to land the airplane uh, somewhat. Of course, he crashed, but he was able to make an emergency landing. And it looks like uh, Mike is pointing towards those big tanks on the aircraft. Another interesting sign there. So with that, let's go ahead and put some stuff up on the board. All right, so the black box... And then we'll put Fred is in the hospital there. We'll check up on that. Now let's go ahead and reconstruct the aircraft. So here we have the tank shield. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. So yeah, this is what was um, missing from this side. There we go. Now these props actually look like they were damaged on impact with the ground. And they may have been spinning. I don't exactly know. We'll have to find out when we look at the black box. Because that'll tell us what's going on with the engine and all the stuff working in the plane. Of course, if it's running. I mean, Stanley was telling us that this plane was barely held together and barely functional. So, yeah. So let's start with a scan of the surface first. I don't really think explosives have to do with this, but we can't rule anything out right now. There we go. And we're going to get this cool animation of the scanning. There we go. Pretty cool there. All right, so let's go ahead and check the email here because we just got an email from the inspection. The scanner results show that the additional crop spray tanks did not affect the aircraft's payload capacity and were not the cause of the accident. That is very interesting because, yeah, I expected that to be the case, but no. So um, I guess, whoops, we don't want to put that there. We want to make sure that's an X interesting so let's go ahead and get that black box out and see what the data is let's see is it inside the aircraft oh well there we go we're gonna put this seat down because we need to actually get the black box out of the plane there it is all right so let's listen to this what the hell what's going on what's going on fuel 
Let's go ahead and go back over here. Now, I did find a vial in the cockpit, so we're going to go ahead and send that off for analysis, and we will go ahead and check our email once that gets back. So, of course, we found out the spray tank is okay. Out of fuel, that's something we uh, found out there. And we got this, new evidence. So, we'll take a look at that and see what that comes back with. Now, we got to go check that fuel gauge because that is pretty important at this time. And interesting, the fuel indicator shows that the tank is half full. So, we'll confirm with the fuel tester. All right, so here's our fuel tester. And we will just try to... Um, well, that's interesting. Doesn't seem to work really well. Oh, here we go. There it is. You have to go on this side. All right, so we'll go over to this side now. So it's sort of a sequential thing. The tank is empty. All right, very interesting. So I can't go to this one yet. So we gotta do two things. I'm gonna go grab this box. And then I gotta go call the mechanic. Let me just go ahead and put this over here. So here we go. Let's give the mechanic a call. All right, this is very interesting. So Stanley is telling us that the fuel gauge uh, not working is very likely. Agricultural machinery aren't subject to mandatory inspections. I suspect that half of the systems were faulty. Wow, that is a very bold claim from the mechanic. All right, so with that, let's take a look at the uh, bottle here. And it looks like it was ordinary aspirin, so nothing too crazy there. It really didn't have much of an impact on the pilot at all. So I'll put these clues on the whiteboard. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, email here. And it looks like this is from St. Mary Hospital. And they're saying that Mr. Fred has regained consciousness. So let's go ahead and give him a call. So even Fred says the gauge hasn't been working for a year. But he did say he always refueled with 200 gallons of fuel and it was enough. This time, a new employee, Pedro, refueled the plane. All right, so we'll need to talk to him. All right, this is very interesting. So, uh, Pedro says he speaks uh, very little English, and it looks like he thought that Fred said 200 liters. So, gallons and liters are two separate things, are two separate ways of measuring liquid. And, uh, yeah, this might be one of the causes. We're gonna need to put these clues on the whiteboard. And there we go. That's pretty big right there. And uh, you know what? I think we can establish the cause of this accident. So we can go ahead and just knock those two out. And there we go. The explanation is simply this. Fred modified his airplane and installed additional tanks. Luckily, it had no impact on the crash. But the real cause of the disaster was a language barrier between Fred and his employee. And he misunderstood the instructions that Fred had given him. Thus, when Fred went flying, his plane ran out of fuel, and he crashed. And that is where I'm going to leave off for this video. This is a really cool game. There's a lot of interactivity with it, and it's pretty cool if you're interested in any of those shows like Air Crash Investigations, or just interested in accident investigations in general. This is a pretty cool game to check out. Links will be in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you all next time, guys. Goodbye.